Right, buying a second-hand bike is a great way of saving some money or picking up a slightly older bike more within your budget. And today, I'm specifically going to be looking at triathlon bikes. I have already trawled the internet for far longer than I like to admit and I picked up this beauty. Yeah, I got this lovely bike from here, 400 pounds, that's around 450 euros or a little over $500. As far as triathlon bikes go, that's pretty reasonable. And yet, don't worry, I've got a few treats in store for this bike over the coming months, so stay tuned for that. Now, obviously, buying a second-hand bike does throw up a few more complications than simply buying a brand new bike. You could run the risk of parting with your hard-earned cash over a pile of rubbish. Fortunately though, bikes are a relatively easy thing to inspect prior to purchasing them though. So today, I'm gonna to run through a few key areas to look out for. Right, first off, where do we buy from? Well, the choice is almost endless these days. We've got eBay, Craigslist, Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace, local papers, clubs, word of mouth. The list just goes on, I think you get the picture. And they all require slightly different tactics, but a couple of things that do remain the same are that you must go in knowing your budget and also your rough frame size. I say rough simply because the sizes do vary a little bit from bike to bike and brand to brand. Hopefully though, fast forward through that searching process, which can take some time, and hopefully you find yourself in the position of going to view a bike. And I really do recommend going to view before you buy rather than simply buying online and hoping for the best. I appreciate that may be difficult during current times in some parts of the world. But fortunately with a bike, it is a relatively easy machine to inspect partly because a lot of the mechanics are exposed so you can inspect them nice and quickly and nice and easily. But you must know what you're looking for. So today I'm going to arm you with some information and we're gonna start off by looking at the frame and the forks. Now if either of these are damaged, unfortunately it means the bike could be virtually useless. Unless of course you've gone for a bit of an investment project, you know what you're looking for or maybe you're just hoping to strip the group set off the frame, then fine. But with the frame and the forks, if you notice any dents, cracks, rust, or bends in the tubing, that should throw up a red flag straight away. Now, don't be afraid to take a real thorough look over the frame. Don't just do a quick glance over. I honestly wouldn't be alarmed if I was selling a bike and someone really took their time and was quite thorough with it. So logic says just start the front or the rear and just work your way along the tube so you don't miss any part of the bike. On an alloy metal bike, look out for any bends in the tubing or on the paintwork if it's bubbled because that could be a sign of corrosion happening underneath the paintwork. On a carbon frame, of course, you want to look out for any cracks in the carbon. And if you can, providing the seller allows you, take the bike for a quick spin, even if that's simply up and down the road. And if you feel like the bike's unbalanced or it's pulling to one side, unfortunately that can mean that the frame is actually bent or it's out of alignment. It's really uncommon, but obviously something worth keeping in mind. Okay, if the frame and the forks are okay, now let's move on to probably the next most important part of the bike, the wheels. Now, of course, these can be easily replaced, but also if they were adding significant value to the second-hand bike, perhaps they were part of the selling factor of the bike because maybe there's some deep section race wheels, then of course you maybe want to pay closer attention to them. But of course, you also do want to be paying for a working bike. So, with the wheels, start off by just simply spinning them just to check that they are nicely aligned. If they run absolutely fine, then great, you're on to a winner. If there's a slight dink in them from side to side, that can perhaps just be trued and sorted quite easily. But if you notice a dink in them by more than a couple of mil from either side, then that could be more of an issue and maybe even just truing won't be able to do the job. Also, it makes you question how well the bike has been looked after anyway. And other bits to check on the wheels are the spoke tension. You can just run your way around just grabbing hold of the spokes just gently just to check their tension. If you notice just a slight loss in tension on the odd one, that's normally fine. That could be tightened up and trued. But if you notice they're severely loose or multiple spokes are loose, that is obviously more of a worry. And then the other bit to check, particularly on rim brake wheels, is the condition of the rim themselves. If they're really worn or even going concave, then they definitely need replacing. 
Okay, now moving on to something we can't actually visually inspect, but we can still certainly feel for their condition, and that is the bearings. Now these are basically in all the moving parts of the bike, so in the headset, in the bottom bracket, and the wheel hubs. Now personally, I like to start at the headset, partly because I feel like they're a good sign of how well someone looks after their bike, or not, as the case may be. So first port of call is simply just to pick up the front wheel and try and turn the handlebars from side to side. If it feels really gritty in that movement, then they could well be on their way to needing being replaced. If they feel like it's getting stuck and it's really, really jolty, then they're definitely gone and they definitely need replacing. Fortunately though, headset bearings are pretty cheap to replace. So in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't be too worried about that. The next test is to put the bike down on the ground, hold on to the front brake and try shunting or rocking the bike back and forth. Ideally, you shouldn't feel any play or movement in the front end, but if you feel a knocking back and forth, then again, they're probably going to need replaced. Or, as I found, because I did experience this knocking back and forth when I got this bike, then it could well be that just the bearings and in their little cups aren't aligned correctly. So I just needed to take the stem off, realign them and pack them back in better, tighten it all down, and that sorts the job for me for free. And then the wheels, obviously, firstly, just check that they're securely fixed into the frame, but nice, easy, and simple test for this one. Grab hold of the wheel and try and move the wheel from side to side. If you feel significant play in the wheel, then yet yeah, the bearings could well be gone and need replacing. And fortunately, only cost around 30 pounds, but it's a relatively technical job, so you may want to factor in dropping into the bike shop and the additional cost that comes with that. Then moving on to the bottom bracket bearings, now this allows the crank arms and pedals to spin freely. So you've probably guessed the test for this one. Yeah, just spin the crank arms, spin the pedals. Ideally you want them to spin nice and freely. If they don't or they slow down very quickly, then unfortunately the bottom bracket may need replacing. Again, not that expensive, normally around 30 to 40 pounds for a bottom bracket bearing. But if you feel significant play in the actual crank arms from side to side, then that could be something more sinister and something you wanna be careful with. And whilst we're down here, we may as well talk about the drivetrain. Now this part of the bike, essentially, as the name suggests, helps to drive us along. It's made up of numerous parts which do all wear out with time, so they do need replacing, which is absolutely fine. But because they're all interlinked, they do quite often all need replacing at the same time. So we're gonna start by checking the chain. You want to pop it into the big ring and then grab a link of the chain by the chain ring. Try to pull it away. If you can pull it more than a few millimeters off or expose the tip of the chain ring teeth, then it most certainly needs replacing. It's also good practice to replace the cassette at the same time as the chain, so they kind of bed into one another. And if the chain's worn out, then it's worth also checking out the chain rings and the chain ring teeth. Ideally, we don't want any uneven wear on the teeth, so one side more worn than the other, or a kind of shark tooth-like effect on those teeth. If they are, then they'll need replacing. And fortunately, you can replace the chain rings without actually having to replace the whole cranks. They can be taken off individually, but prices for chain rings do vary considerably. And then on to the actual gear. So does it shift from the small ring to the big ring and vice versa? And can it run through the rear cassette nice and happily? Now, if it's struggling on any of those and it's the actual mechanisms, both the front and the rear, that are causing that, then that can be a costly fix. But more often than not, it's actually just the cables running to those mechanisms. They're either slightly rusty, corroded, they're sticking a little bit, or the gears just aren't set up at all. Now, a nice way to check this is by actually manually pushing on the front of the rear mech gently to see if they'll move. Now, you should only do this on non-electronic group sets, not the electronic group sets. So on the front mech, just push that with your thumb it is a little bit more stiff than the rear mech, but it certainly shouldn't be a workout to move it. If it is more stiff than you expect, then it may just need simply a bit of TLC. Same on the rear mech, just be gentle, more gentle with that one to push it through the gears. Again, if that's stiff, it may need a bit of TLC, but if both are overly stiff and you're struggling to move them, then unfortunately it could be a replacement too.
And last of all are the brakes, which are obviously very important. So we want to check them first of all, both on rim and disc brakes, by pulling the levers in quite firmly and just checking that they work. On rim brakes, if they're not working very well, well again, this could simply be the cable running down to the brakes. If that's corroded or rusty, then it's not going to move that freely through the outer cable. It might get stuck, etc. So go straight to the source and by hand, try pushing the caliper in, letting go. What you should do is just push in quite easily and when you let go, spring back out, which it does on this bike, which is good news. Next thing to look at is the pad wear, which actually is a very cheap and easy thing to replace if you need to. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if they're overly worn, then again, that could be a sign that it's a bike that hasn't been that well looked after. Disc brakes, a little bit more tricky to look at when you're inspecting over the bike, but things to look out for, if they feel spongy or you can pull the lever all the way back in, then they could need bleeding again. If the pistons are moving in and out from the actual caliper itself, happily that's something to look into and also the pad wear if they're all fully worn out they'll need replacing but if they are fully worn out then you also may want to check the actual disc the rotor itself because that may mean that you've had metal on metals so they've been scored and that's going to affect their performance going forward and that obviously ends up being a little bit more costly and again makes you wonder how well that bike's been looked after in the first place now from experience having been on both sides don't be afraid to ask questions it's really really important also do try and look past some of the minor things like bar tape or saddles because those are relatively easy and simple things to replace. But anyway, hopefully I've armed you with a lot of information there. If you have any more questions, please drop them in the comments section below or any advice having sold or bought secondhand bikes in the past. We'd love to hear them and I'm sure many others would love to read them too. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to give us a follow and a subscribe because we've got some treats in store for this bike coming soon.